Shalom, what is good everybody? Today's video title is going to be Obedience, the key to salvation and inner healing and deliverance. Thought I'd jump on today and do a video about this subject. Uh, just this past year, 2023 into 2024, I spent a lot of time reading the scripture, the AMP version of the Bible, very highly recommended. I do recommend you guys study this version if you haven't checked it out. I spent a lot of time reading the scripture. A lot of time praying and fasting. Uh, as some of you may know from the previous videos, my mother was was uh, brought into hospital for heart operation. So praise God that the Lord healed and delivered my mum from that operation, and uh, she's still with us. So I uh, thank you, Lord, for you know restoring my mum's health and her heart. She she was one of the people who did get the told her not to. She still got it, but. So this year, I've just been thinking, you know, I've been doing a lot more prayer and fasting and reading the scripture and just being a lot more obedient after my stint of disobedience when my mother was, prior to my mum going to the operation, I was drinking and smoking cigarettes and just just in a, a state, a backslidden state, dealing with the anxiety of the whole situation. Situation with my... Uh, narcissistic father and family and that and you know it's, it's been quite a tra traumatic past couple of years but so obedience is key to deliverance this past two three months uh, i've received quite a fair share of deliverance uh from from online zoom deliverance meetings and online deliverance ministers and that and i was trying to get booked in with them again but I don't know that I'm not I'm not really getting any sense out of them now. Um, I had a few sessions, and uh, what I'm learning now, where I am on my walk now, a few years in, is what will get God's attention is is that obedience. The more you are obedient and abstaining from sin and applying the word to your life, the more you are going to see the fruits of healing deliverance sanctification come upon you and um we have to not keep reaching for our deliverance uh frantically because deliverance doesn't come overnight it has to it's a it's a it's an ongoing process of peeling layers off of the onion and i was reviewing some of the earlier videos on the channel i don't know if you guys watched the um new age to jesus testimony video and in that that was when i first come to christ and uh, i was sharing in the video what i what i was using to get deliverance in the video you guys can check that video out um as well on the channel but there's a prayer from fernando perez that i've been going back to and listening to again and getting deliverance again and i'm fasting and praying again and i've been revealed that revelation again to just be in the word more uh you know reading hours of the scripture a day praying in the spirit for hours a day fasting for days on end you know and listening to the same deliverance prayers like the three hour fernando perez deliverance prayers to receive with deliverance especially when you're waiting for deliverance minister is key but obedience is key to deliverance you can only get so far without it i mean like Disobe any disobedience in your life is enough to just completely just ruin your your deliverance and your sanctification so i'm going to share some of the stories so some of the things that have happened over the past few years since first getting saved is i've brought people into my sphere of influence that needed help and i've helped them and the the, the disobedience was i helped them past the point God would say to me to only help this person for maybe a week or two weeks and you have to work out what season you're in you know with people you're not necessarily in a season to be helping people ministering to people or getting unequally yoked with people now unequal yokes is another thing because you could have like been fasting for the past seven eight months on and off you know a few days or so a week praying in the spirit aggressively fervent aggressive prayer tearing down strongholds receiving deliverance receiving healing you could be receiving that or or, or of received that and you can bring into your sphere of influence someone who hasn't been fasting for past seven eight months and, and needs more deliverance than you that's now an unequal yoke and you need to learn to 
you need to decipher when it's time to disband from certain things. Some of you are, are caught up, you know, in certain congregations. You're going to a congregation to receive deliverance, but you've actually received the deliverance that you are you were on. You're on a, an assignment to go there, receive deliverance for maybe a few weeks or a few months, and 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 spread some messages to some of the people in the congregation give people like revelation about certain things sometimes it's rebuking uh people in the congregation or pastors or whatever you know you're for me a lot of the time i'm the bearer of bad news for people you know like i just rebuked someone earlier because i know if i meet people who are misleading me with their words and, and, and messing me about say oh i'll book you in for a session next week we'll do something and then like i'm like three months later that I'm still just getting messed about. They're telling me they might may book me in for a session here or there, uh, but they're taking on deliverance of other people. Like anyone who's in deliverance ministry has got to be really, really wised up to just how uh, easy it is to get caught up with the wrong people or doing the wrong thing. You could pray for the wrong person. You could pray for someone like someone has got insomnia and they've been doing tarot cards. They're coming to get rid of the insomnia, but they're going to turn around and go straight back to their sin. And uh, obedience is only going to get you, you know, disobedience is only going to get you so far. You're only going to get so much deliverance through being a part obedient and disobedient in every other areas you have to go full throttle into obedience and that means you know giving up giving up lust giving up uh you know the drink the drugs the smoking all of these things all forms of sin willful sin has got to go and when you you take away willful sin and focus purely on jesus on the holy spirit everything of the holy spirit reading the word you know spending hours reading the scripture just to study to show yourself approved so you can level up spiritually but you will get deliverance from reading the scripture this is one of the things i i, I forgot you know i come this, this like last year 2023 and into this year i read loads hours hours and hours of the scripture i was just literally sitting on the sofa reading like three hours of the scripture then praying for for hours a day and uh as the scripture says seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all be added unto you if you seek god if you seek the holy spirit through prayer through fasting if you are obedient if you abstain from sin you're going to start seeing the fruits of god working in your life you know and and just make sure that there's no there's no doorways to any evil spirits in your in your in your in your life or bloodline or relationships a relationship can be a demonic doorway you know and that's what i'm saying disobedience is like the obedience is you've got to give someone a message and sometimes you're not seeking the approval of man you're seeking the approval of god so god's going to tell you i want you to talk to this person but only for a week or help them give them a message then that's it cut cut ties because you like to be walking with god we have got to be truly set apart we have to live a set apart separate lifestyle from the vast majority of people because everyone else is people in going in the churches they're fornicating in the churches people going in the churches they're drinking and smoking weed they're drinking alcohol they're getting drunk they're getting messed up on on uh, you know drinking drugs some of them are still some of them are going in the churches and they're still doing tarot cards and meditation and new age practices they've still got for example disobedience could be god's told you to throw out an occult book that you have in your house that's given demons illegal ground and an, uh, an altar it's an altar in your home for demons to oppress you and you've not thrown it out that's disobedience obedience is literally doing and a lot of the things that god will tell you to do you'll think are like uh, will, to the world to the to the vast majority of the world will sound nuts i want you to tell this person you want to stop talking to them because they're oppressed by demons and you can't chat to them you go and tell someone listen i can't talk to you because i've had seven months more of deliverance than you than you and you're uh, chatting to you every day even though i've got things to tell you and help you with like oh, i've told you what you need to do you now need to go off and fast and pray and read the scripture yourself you need to level yourself up you need to be filled with this holy spirit yourself you need to you need to uh you know crucify your flesh but I can't do that by speaking to you every day, day in, day out, day in, day out. I can't do that. This is why I do the channel intermissions on my channel regularly. Come away from here, pray and fast and stay in the Father's presence. Stay in the presence of the Ruach. The, the Ruach is the spirit in Hebrew, you know. And that's the only way you can le level up, you know, spiritually. But if you're going to like, even going to a deliverance Zoom meeting or deliverance church. And you're going there week in, week out, week in, week out, week in, week out. And if you're not receiving a, a, 
a reasonable amount of deliverance each time. If they're not praying over you for an hour and a half or half hour, like each time you're only getting like 10 minute bursts of deliverance and 10 minute bursts of deliverance, but there's like 20, 30, 40, 100 people in there. You're just making, you're just getting an unequal yoke and soul tie to everyone that's in the congregation. And how many of them are truly obedient to the, the, the word of God? How many of them are truly, not, not obedient to the word of God actually, obedient to the spirit of God? Because you can say, look, this is in the word of God. It says this in the word of God. Yeah, it says that in the word of God. But what does the spirit also say to you? You can't just rely only on what the word of God says. People have been deceived by it. People weaponize the scriptures regularly. You see it in congregations. It says it in the word of God. But also, what does it the, 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 you know, the word of God is written on our hearts. It's written on the hearts of man. So what does what is the what is the spirit telling you to do, leading you to do? Because you might say go to the congregation for deliverance or a Zoom meeting for deliverance or a deliverance church for, for deliverance, but you've been there now for for you know a year, year and a half, seven, eight months, two years, however however long you've been there, and you were there for an assignment to get deliverance for a week, two months, or you know however long, and deliver some messages to people. Now you've got to go. Now you have to go and carry on saving souls for the kingdom and and leveling up and spend it's the ruach that does that does everything the ruach the the healing the deliverance and the sanctification comes from the ruach the rock is the spirit the holy spirit working through you through being obedient through abstaining from the sin through confessing your sins through asking the holy spirit to reach in and take the wounds through pleading the blood on any on any generational curses praying in the spirit building ourselves up in our most holy faith romans even states in romans it says we do not know what we ought to pray for but the spirit himself uh, intercedes for us through wordless groans so basically saying that man alone our own english speaking prayers or native tongue speaking prayers when we say like heavenly father please you know save my family members please do this please do that when we just like say those prayers all the time daily that's we're not walking in the path that's that's our tongue that says that it's our native tongue but when you pray in the spirit when you pray in tongues the spirit is interceding through you and the spirit's doing things the spirit's gonna 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 convey and send out what you know what needs to be sent out and, and, and call angels to do this and do that and you, you you're yielding your members your bodily members for instruments of righteousness for instruments of prayer of worship that's why we have to feast our eyes on Christ. That's why you spend you you feast your eyes, spend hours reading the Word, spend hours in prayer, spend hours fasting, spend hours worshiping. It's like lock off all of the demonic old you know friends of people who are steeped in sin. They've got to go because they are now warfare for each and every one of you. If you're if you're not being obedient, if God's told you you need to lock someone off, that person's toxic. They're demonic. They've gone back to the world. The Holy Spirit will warn you as well, you know, and if you don't listen, the Holy Spirit gives us enough warning. And if you don't listen, if you don't cut someone off at the right moment, when, like, I always hear it, I'll hear the Holy Spirit. Like, I'll get off the phone to someone, I'll talk to someone, it'll be the last conversation I have with them. And the Holy Spirit will say, your work with them is done. Your assignment with them is done. And I'll, it's like, and then I don't all, I'm not, I've not always been obedient to that. Sometimes I'm like, no, they, they rang, they ring me up the next week. Hi, how are you? How's everything? Blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, cool. I give them, but the thing is after I've given someone like a revelation on the matter and like guidance on the matter and, and the, the, they've got to go off and do that. You've got to go off and do that. And if I've told you what you need to do and you're being disobedient, like, and you're now, you're now a hindrance to my walk. This is how the, the, the disciples lived. They did, not, they did not stay stuck in one church, in one congregation, in one Zoom meeting, in one group, in one... They weren't stuck around people for days on... Day in, day out. They had to go off and fast and pray and sit and, and, and save souls and spread, and spread seeds of the gospel, share the gospel, and then, get, and then they're getting persecuted. That church comes at them dust off your feet if you if you're if you're not welcomed at one place dust off your feet and move on to the next dust off your feet and move on to the next they will they they did not stay still stagnant in one place still be still in the presence of god they were still in the presence of god but they did not stay stagnant in one one location and people need to, to learn that that we shouldn't be stagnant in one location 
you, you, you people, many of you people, then you go to congregations, you go to churches, you go to, to you know, Bible readings or whatever. Once you've got, once you've got the, you're there. You've got what you've got out of that. You need to move. You need to get to keep it moving. If the Lord has said to you, you need to be in a place for, for you know, a season, for a year, two years, three years, fine. But really and truly staying in, in one spot, like for, for, for months and months and years and years at a time, like, and not being obedient, not cutting off certain people. Certain people, they've got to go. You've got to become unpopular with people. I can't talk to you. You have gone back into sin. I cannot, I can't be around you right now. You're in a season that you're in that season. There's a time for everything under the sun. But right now, I can't be in the season that you are in. You are you are in a season of backsliding, and and I'm not even saying that just sounds wrong, you know. Backsliding is still it's a no go. Will, willful sin is a no go, and the only way you're going to get strength to overcome your strongholds, uh, you know, and your generational curses, and be able to defeat the wiles of the enemy is through praying and fasting and spending hours in the in in the spirit in in the spirit to walk in spirit and in truth to be with the spirit to be walking in the spirit and being obedient. But when we go out in the world and you start dealing with people and you're going into congregations and you're getting rejected in congregations and you're getting you're getting told you know you need to do this and you need to do that and you and you're no longer following the spirit of God. The spirit of God's told you rebuke that pastor, rebuke them. They need to be told that they're in the wrong. They are they are they are not perfect. They are in the wrong, and you need to tell them and then leave. If they don't want to hear it, go get out. To be set apart. That's what being set apart is. To be set apart. The scripture says come out from among them. Be ye separate. Touch no unclean thing. And I will I will accept you. No, I will, I will raise you up in due time. I will heal you and sanctify you and deliver you. But if you're going around unclean ruachs. Unclean spirits. People with, with unclean spirits. Are in congregations. In Zoom meetings. You're never going to get your deliverance. So I, like this past couple months i've had loads of deliverance on zoom meetings and with pastors online and stuff they cast out a lot of stuff and uh but now i'm just like i'm just hitting a brick wall with them like yo can we book can you book me in for another session can we book me in for i'm not getting any sense out of them so now i'm like okay i know that that's it then the the assignment was was done i was only meant to be in that little group and those things for maybe a month and a half two months get deliverance get some inner healing get some sanctification and then move back into my my you know my deliverance my my prayer you know i'm an intercessor for the body of christ and um you know it's it's like cycles things happen in cycles you know and, and what i'm saying is what i've learned l lately recently is uh that when I re rewind back all of the things I've done on my walk so far, you know, from the beginning of coming to Christ in 2018 until now, I'm, I'm like, I've done a big loop. Like, I bought loads of books. I had loads of books like this. This is a great book. I did a review of it, of it on the channel. You can check it out. These books, they were good. There's loads of books. I mean, I learned a lot of scripture from reading these script, these books as well. But And I did learn, like, techniques and prayers and things to do. But, like nothing nothing tops reading the scripture for hours just read the actual word for hours fast for four days a week abstain from sin pray in the spirit for hours a day you don't need these people you don't need congregations and all these people go get get your prayer get your if you need to be prayed over if you've just come to the to to, to you know the kingdom and you need prayer then go to them places but you don't need it because when I first come to Christ back in 2018, I had none of that. I was going to, pray, can you pray over me? Can you do this? I was going to churches. I've been nothing but disappointed by any of these congregations and churches. I'm yet to find, uh, there's some deliverance churches I've, I've, I wanted to go to in America, but my visa got denied for America, so I didn't get round to going there, but... I've been nothing but disappointed with congregations because I've gone there thinking like, yeah, oh, this is cool. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna they're gonna pray over me for an hour and a half, two hours, three hours. I get all this stuff up and out, gone, and then bang, I can get on with my ministry. And uh, I, I, it hasn't gone like that. You go there, you come to the congregate, you watching, you listening to the sermons, 
you pray over other people, you be and then like you know, you might do that for a few weeks, a few months. You get you will get a couple like deliverance sessions there. And then it's like now, like I'm just wasting time coming to these to these things, you know. If the Lord wants you to go to a congregation and be there and be part of that congregation, then fine. But if you've got ministry and work and your own other things that you're doing for the kingdom, then then carry on with what you have to do, you know. Don't get caught up on, on this stuff. And, you know, obedience is also listening to the, the, the voice of the Lord, you know, the hunches, the, following your intuition, your inner teacher, your, your inner guidance system, the in, inner teacher, the intuition, the Holy Spirit within to tell you, you know, okay, it's time to lock off this person. This person, I've, I said what I needed to say, lock them off. You know, I need to get further into prayer i need to get further into the word i need to do this i need to i need to save souls i need to go to this person and deliver them a message like we're not meant to be popular i don't get people people go in these congregations and they want to oh i want to be liked by the pastor and i want to be liked but and you want to be seen by man you want the approval of man still you still want you want to appease uh men that's the flesh that's your ego Get, seeking validation and approval and all this stuff, that is your ego. Obedience manifests itself in, to the world, it will it manifests in weird ways. It will manifest as telling someone, I can't speak to you anymore because you've gone back into sin. That's obedience. Rebuking a pastor or a church leader because they're fornicating with someone in the congregation. Because you've seen it. We're called to expose evil. Obedience is stopping smoking cigarettes. It's not buying a box of cigarettes. Not watching porn. Not drinking alcohol. Not going out. Not answering the phone to a friend who wants to drink alcohol and get you drunk and messed up on drink and weed and drugs and stuff. Obedience is throwing out your whole entire occult book collection that you've had for years that you spent hundreds of pounds of pounds on obedience is and this is the one thing that when i get back to my mum's i want to do because i feel like i got a lot of cds like old cds and stuff and at some point i do feel like i need to if i say it on here it's going to make me motivate me to do it i've got like worldly music uh, cds that i want to throw away but that's what obedience is getting like literally getting like a cd like a rap cd like cypress hill or something and 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 ripping it up and throwing it in the bin and saying i can't have this this is an idol this is an altar this is an evil altar this is a covenant with spirits of lust and anger and rage and criminality and perversion and hatred and violence and all these things that you get spirits from all of these everything has a spiritual frequency so if it's not glorifying if it's not the fruits of the spirit spirit it's glorifying other spirits, video games, TVs, movies, throwing out certain things. Get like it's like not playing, not playing Resident Evil or I don't know, like whatever Doom or whatever horror uh, video games and stuff. Like because there's a dem demonic undertone to certain things, and obedience is not doing that. Like even. I've gone into shops before, right? And I've gone to, but I, like I, I think it was like a, like a fajita kit they put on there. They put on the on the front of it, like a, or it might have been a super noodle, a pack of super noodles, something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, once I had this pack of super noodles or fajita kit or whatever it was, and it had a Palo Mayombe or, or Palo Santos. The satanic religions, the Roman Catholic satanic religions, um, those idols from like Latin America, the, the, those uh, satanic religions, it had one of those like demons on the front of the packaging and the Holy Spirit said, you've got to throw that away, you can't eat that. And that's obedience. Like, I'm going to throw this away because this will give me a spirit. If you say that to, if you say that to normal worldly people, they'll think you're barking mad. You say, oh, like, say, oh, what happened? Why aren't you speaking to Thingy? What's happened to, like, you used to speak to so and so? What's happened? Oh, I'm not speaking to them now because they've gone back into sin. But you, they were like, you, you were like that. You were like proper close, like, friends. What, you've stopped speaking? To them. Yeah, they've gone back into sin. They've gone back to, like, I can't be around them. They're, I'm getting oppressed. 
If you say this, you say this to anyone, yeah, anyone in the world, and even Christians as well. Christians will even weaponize. They'll say, "Oh, forgiveness, forgiveness, oh, forgiveness." Yeah, forgiveness, forgiveness is forgiveness. You've got to forgive others as the Lord forgave forgave you. But you don't use that as a you don't give people legal right to your life when they're doing abominable things. You have to lock them off. You have to get away from certain people. You have to confront evil. You have to confront wickedness. Rebuke people. You're, we're here to forewarn people of the wrath that is to come. Do you know how many people... I've lost count of how many people I've forewarned of the wrath. I've, ra I've, I've, I've forewarned so many people of the wrath. And they've laughed. They've mocked. They've thrown me under the bus. And the wrath has come. And landed on their heads. Oh, who's he? Who's it? Ugh. Don't do that. You're coming in a church. Don't say this. Don't say that. Rah, rah, rah. You can't rebuke this. If if people can confront you for your sin, your wrongdoing, you should be able to confront them for their wrongdoing. And if there's a lack of accountability, if there's an if there's people if there's insincerity with people, then there's no obedience. Because if you're insincere, then you're not obedient to the Spirit of God, are you? Because you're concealing. To conceal sin and to be disobedient is to is to manipulate and control and deceive and to 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 walk in the fruits of 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 pride you know pride uh, satan you know pride a haughty spirit you know which there's seven things that the lord hates a haughty spirit proud look lying lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devises wicked schemes false witness that pours out lies what if you go into congregations and being being yoked with people and they're lying, they're manipulating, and they're and they're deceiving, and they're not they're not taking accountability for where they're at. That's why you got to say, yo, look, I've I've rebuked you, I've told you, you've gone back to certain sin. I can't be around it, and they'll start trying to lie on you and, and tell you that it's not that way. Then you've got to go because they're now that they're, now they're going to be used by the enemy, spirits of lust, spirits of anger, whatever, spirits of of marine spirits of drink and drug alcohol whatever it is coming through that person because you're connected with them you've now got a demonic soul tied to someone an unequal yoke to someone and you're trying to get your deliverance healing and sanctification and as you're getting your deliverance your healing and sanctification by being obedient by applying the word to your life by reading the scripture for hours a day, for, by praying, by fasting, by getting your sanctification, your healing and deliverance, abstaining from sin, levelling up. But then you're getting oppressed by the spirits around people because you haven't locked them off when the Lord's told you to leave that congregation or lock that person off or throw out the occult books that are, that are giving these demons legal grounds. Obedience looks like madness to the rest of the world. The camera cut out on me. But yeah, I was just wrapping it up. I said obedience looks like obedience looks like madness to the rest of the world. But it's key. It's key to salvation. It's key to deliverance, you know. There's so there's some scriptures I want to go into before I, I jet off. So Revelation 21 8 it says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So it says, The cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So if you're a liar, if you if someone confronts your sin and you lie about it, you're going to the lake. If you can't say, oh, oh, and even coming up like, God has grace for sin given the circumstances. So when my mother was in the hospital, I was drinking, I was smoking, and I was caught up in watching pornography. And I said to the Lord, I don't want to do this. I can't stop doing this. I can't just, I'm, I'm not, I was not able to deal with the, the what was going on. And God's had grace because now he's seen my mother's got the healing and the, the deliverance and sanctification. No more, no more cigarettes, no more drinking, no more pornography. He's seen the change in me. And that's when 
I, I don't want to say that you can you can get away with willful sin. I can't say that, you know, because that's that will be on my head if I say that. And, and you know, I'm like, willful sin is a no go zone, and I'm working on that myself through my own prayer and fasting. But here's Galatians six one. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. That's Galatians 6 1. 1 Corinthians 5 11 to 13. But now I have written to you to not keep company with anyone named a brother, a brother or sister, I think this is meant to say, who is sexually immoral, a covetous, or an idolater, or a reveller, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not 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 even to eat with such a person. So how many people are actually saying that they can they can say that say oh look, you know what you're you're sexually immoral I'm not speaking to you you're a cover you're a coveter I'm not speaking to you you're not idolater I'm not speaking to you you're a reveler I'm not speaking to you you're a drunkard I'm not speaking to you you're an extortioner I'm not eat, I'm not I'm not speaking to you how many people can say that they don't you you've got to be that obedient to cut off people who've gone back into the world. So 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 20. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. So it says, food for the stomach and stomach for the food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. Do you not know that the bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. But he who unties himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Sorry, he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. And it says flee from sexual immorality all other sins a man commits are outside his body but he who sins sexually sins against his own body do you not know that your body is a temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from god you are not your own you were bought at a price therefore honor god with your body so many people that i speak to right and i tell them fornication is a no-go zone and then they're like, oh, but I get lonely, I get lonely, I get lonely, I get lonely. I'm like, yeah, so do I. So do I. Though don't we all? Isn't that part, isn't that part and parcel of, the, of suffering? If you're not ready to suffer for the kingdom, then you're, that's it. Christ suffered. I don't know, like, these people sell in these congregations and these churches and these meetings that you're meant to be happy and like oh we go well jesus and they go in the congregation start like running around and it's just pomp it's complete pomp no, none of the no one's going into them places and saying you're a liar you're a slanderer you're an idolater you care more about money than saving people's souls you you want to you want to do deliverance to make yourself look good not to actually help the intention of man's heart is important to the Almighty. If you're doing things with 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 a with a weird or bad intention, the Almighty sees it. But people don't think like that. They think, oh yeah, but I'm in the church. They're all cool, like these people. So many of those people are going to go down to the pit on the day of judgment. They're not even going to stand. They're not even going to. They're not going to have a leg to stand on. Proverbs 13, 13, he who scorns instruction will pay for it. But he who respects a command is rewarded. Proverbs 16, 20, 
Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. See that? Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Proverbs 19.16 He who obeys instructions guards his life. But he who is contemptu contemptuous of his ways will die. Can you believe it? I have had recently, this happened recently, this past uh, you know, year or so. There was a congregation I went to, Hebrew Israelite congregation. The bloke in there, I confronted sin in the congregation. He said, who are you? You have your own witness. He basically said, you're on your own, mate. You can come and try and confront sin. He said, you're not allowed to come back now to the congregation until you repent, he said. I said, I'm not coming back to the congregation then because I, I, was, uh, I was away. I was away from London. This was in London, this congregation. And he said, he was away. He said, I'll be back in, in, uh, in, three, in three weeks. And in the three weeks he was away, when he come back, uh, I wouldn't be in London anymore. He said, so you can't come. He said, you're not allowed to come back there until I'm there. Because he wasn't there when I confronted the sin in the congregation. And uh, he said, you're not allowed to come back there until I'm there. Yeah. Someone basically was slandering me in the congregation. That's the, that's the, 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 the short of it. <clears throat> so he said that to me. I, I, went, I, I went away. Uh... He, I knew he was coming back in three weeks, but I was leaving in three weeks. I was, I was coming away from London. I don't like being in London. I hate being in that. This is a city. I hate being in cities. Cities are demonized places. So you're running a congregation in a demonized place, and God, the Lord's set me, you know, set me apart. Come out from among them. He's, he's set me away. So anyway, he, he didn't like me confronting this sin in the congregation. He told me, he told me, you know, you're on your own. And then not only that, he slandered my my mother was going into hospital and he stood up in front of the congregation and said, and, and I know he did, I know he word cursed me to the congregation there. And the Lord brought the wrath down on his mother. His mother, his mother passed away recently. Now, what I'm saying about obedience here is, in this, we had a back and forth with him. I had a back and forth with this guy and I did. I lost my temper. I lost my temper with him. I said, you I said I said I feel so sorry for the people who come in your congregation and they've got like they've got you know four or five hours of 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 um you know your the show you standing in the in the middle reading them look at how much Bible I know blah 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 I know the Bible blah, blah. people coming into the church they want prayer they want they want healing they need help they need guidance and support. They need a support network and system in place. Not you showing off what you know. I'm not saying Bible study isn't isn't uh, you know needed. It is it is it is somewhat important, but not to the extent like hours and hours standing in the middle, not praying for people, and then you've got to jump through hoops to get help. But he trusted in his wealth. He trusted in his in his in his, in his followers. You know the people in the congregation. Nah, that guy's a problem. That guy's a problem. You confronted sin in the congregation. Stand up in front of a whole congregation, slander me, smeared my name, dragged my name through the mud, and I lost my temper with him. I showed, I showed my mum. Look, this is what this guy said because I was trying to get uh, worship, record worship music. The guy's mother's now passed away. I don't know the ins and outs of that, but I know that that was God's wrath because I've seen it happen time and time again. People have put like no, you like don't share that video in our in our Facebook group. You can't do that, man. man uh, we're in charge of this. Like none of that's the, the 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 spirit of God's not told them to say that. If the spirit of God is not behind the things that you say, you're working iniquity. So you can't do that. You can't do this. You're oppressing people. That's what they did to Jesus. You people need to get to get. You know, get with the the program and really know that it's the obedience. Is it's got you got to follow the spirit inside the, the the spirit of God. The obedience has got to come from there. Not going. Oh well, well in here it says this. Well in here it says that. And I've found a word for them. They're called Bible proselytes, where they weaponize the scripture. But it says this is in scripture. But it says that in the scripture. But it says this is in scripture. Yeah. What's your point? 
That ain't going to help you on the day of judgment. I'm, I, I, where I am in my walk with the Lord, I'm, the fear of the Lord is gripping me. It's starting to grip me and, and engulf me. It's frightening prospect to, to know how, like, I think, am I even going to make it in? I hope I'm going to make it. I need to sort, like, now I'm, like, fast and pray and be more obedient. Forgive people who've wronged me. Like, even if people and people are like throwing, like mocking and insulting you, and I'm like, you know what? I don't care. They're like, because the judgment's coming for those. Do not seek vengeance, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. He will repay. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. He will repay. And I've seen it over and over again. People who've wronged me, family members have ended up in hospital or dead. They've ended up sickness disease losing jobs losing money put in jail all sorts of crazy stuff's happened to people crazy stuff's happened to people then you're not these people are not walking in obedience and if you continually walk in disobedience for 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 a long season eventually the, the spirit's just going to go you know what i can't be bothered with you i've told you stop watching porn i've told you stop uh, you know, stop being bitter or unforgiving or whatever. I've told you to cut, uh, throw away those occult books. I've told you to stop speaking to those people. There's people that come to me and they they come at me and they moan about their their, their spiritual condition that they're in and da, da, da. and then I ask questions and after speaking to them, I look, find out. Oh, you know, like, oh, but I get lonely, so I'm fornicating with. Them. I'm like, <laughs> that's why your spiritual condition is a mess. Because you're going out and you're, 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 you're living in sin. You're steeped in sin. It's sin to the Almighty. It's a big thing. Obedience is, is a big, big thing to the Almighty. I'm telling you, if you really want deliverance, if you really want inner healing, sanctification, and to move forward and progress spiritually, obedience is key. What does obedience look like? It looks like praying more. Working out how many hours in a day you pray. You know How many hours you pray in a day? Oh, I only pray a half an hour, 15 minutes. Not enough. You have 24 hours in the day. How many of them you can pray? You don't have to pray. You don't have to pray out loud. You can pray in your spirit, in your mind's eye. You can pray. And the more you pray, the more you're, you're breaking down any strongholds, the more any wiles of the enemy that's coming at you. This is a spiritual war and battle. It's not a, it's not a, a popularity context. It's not about going to congregations and getting popular and getting validated. Do you know if the if 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 the true if the the true disciples Jesus' disciples or whatever were uh, walking the earth right now they would walk into congregations and just like and and Jesus as well they'd upturn tables and just they'd say this is just pompous people because the, the thing is with those congregations you get people try they go to a church the oppressed you know the scripture says I came to set the oppressed free to heal the brokenhearted. Christ was 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 sent to 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 help people. He wasn't sent to right. Well, I know this much. I've been reading this. I know this much. I'm gonna stand here on the podium and I'm gonna be so like because I want my ego massaged. He did not die for that. He didn't die for people to stand on a on a you know on, on a podium and and give speeches. But this is what annoys me, and this is what, and this is another reason why I go and I vanish. I come off my YouTube because I'm, I am not anybody that can give you guys anything. All I can share is my experience. I know some scripture because I've read it. I've read some prayers. I am nothing. I am wretched. I am a wretched human being that the fear of God is gripping, and I need to continue to walk in obedience myself. And not fall into backsliding and, and get angry and, and caught up and get caught up in demonic doctrine with people and arguments with people over what scripture's right. Just get away from people, pray for people. If you see people who are starving on the street, feed them. If you see people that need prayer, pray for them. This is what we need to do, share your testimony. Oh, by the way, like Holy Spirit's done this for me. The Holy Spirit's done that. Oh, well, I don't believe in religion. Yeah, look, look, can I do some prayer for you now? Have you got anything that happened to you in your childhood or years of your life that you that you can remember that you're still bothered about? Oh, yeah, maybe there's something. All right, can we do some prayer for that now? Holy Spirit, reach in, take the boom, 
take the take that out. Showing people that, sharing that with people. It's not about arguing a scripture, going to the oh Jesus. If it's in vain, if it's pomp, I'm not saying don't worship, but what I'm saying is if everything, the if the intention behind what people are doing is vain and pomp and just pretentious and worldly and look at me, look at me, I'm standing up on the podium and look how much scripture, it is pointless. We are sent to help people. We are sent to give messages to people, to pray for people, to deliver people, to heal people, to give people sanctification. To not collect badges for doing prayer for people and stand on the podium and get loads of followers. Anyway, this video has gone overkill. Just thought I'd cover that in this video. Keep me raised in prayer. Keep, keep my family raised in prayer for salvation as well. I will be going on a, on a you know, sabbatical.